ladies, what's going on, man? Welcome back to another TOEFL ITP, baby. We got the nice little thing right over here. The nice a little legend that I'm putting right there on the wall along with plants and so many other great things. I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, I debuted the last video on my YouTube. And normally when I debut TOEFL IBT, it could stem anywhere between 10 to 30 views. But in two weeks, just two weeks, this TOEFL ITP video, the last one I did about the Coca-Cola can, uh, ended up hitting 120. And it goes to show me that the majority of you who are following me on YouTube, all of you really want that TOEFL ITP content. So if you want me to dive into more of the particulars in regards to this, obviously I've already stated that the TOEFL ITP uh, reading course is available. We're going to be doing reading today, vocabulary questions, understanding context. And with that, you have the listening course, the structure, and the written expression, and as stated before, right? So with that being said, people, man, let's dive right into this bad boy. So here we go. We got the teddy bear. Oh, my God. I had no idea where the teddy bear came from, but apparently it came from punk-ass Teddy Roosevelt. That's right, people. I'm so excited about this one <sighs> because we're going to be understanding context. So this is going to be a relatively short one. These are from the easier, okay, kind of like the long bin texts. Uh, the harder text that I do is kind of like, th there are two different types of texts. One text is in this one, long bin, I actually do on my, uh, what is it, the YouTube channel. But the ones you see in sneak peek form are actually from the very, very difficult text, ones that you will more than likely see on your test. And so that and the entire videos of that listening structure, written expression, and reading are available on my TOEFL IBT courses, TOEFL ITP courses, sorry. So with that being said, again, the sell is still there. The upsell, 57, and you only have to pay 27 for the next one in regards to structure, written expression, listening, and reading, and all of these and these different concepts and strategies, tips, and techniques are dwell, oh, delved, delved, well, fuck it. I dive into them very, very well in the course. But today we have four questions. Teddy, bitch ass Roosevelt, the teddy bear vocabulary. That's right, people. We're going to be diving into this, all uh, right? And I say bitch ass because Teddy Roosevelt, he was a racist. You know how it was. Nin the early 1900s, America was terrible. So let's just dive right in. Here we go. According to line one of the passage, what is a teddy bear? So understanding context, right? So the teddy bear is a child's toy, a nice, soft, stuffed animal suitable for cuddling. Now, you may not know what a teddy bear is, but based on what I just said, it's a toy. It's nice, stuffed animal suitable for cuddling. So are those all positive adjectives describing what a teddy bear is? Yes. Tip number one. Look for the positive, the negative, and the neutral adjectives, because there are some big words, as I have written down in here, extricated, where we have to understand, okay, what is going on? But these are all contextualized. I mean, I'm going to be diving into the context in which it is being used in the sentence. But if you ever have a problem, look at it and say, oh, does it sound positive? Is this negative? Okay, what about the sentence? Is it positive, negative? That will help you. Most definitely it will. All right. So if we come down here, obviously these are all positive. So if we look at this, all right, A, a ferocious animal. Ferocious, you're probably like, oh my God, I don't know what that word is. Sounds very like ferocity, right? It sounds bad. So based on all the positive adjectives that we have with teddy bear, we're not going to choose ferocious animal, are we? Why? Well, because it sounds right. Now, the president of the USA, absolutely not a teddy bear, uh, although named after it because what Teddy did after that, you know, it's crazy how he showed more support for a teddy bear than he did slaves. Anyway, so the president of the USA will leave it there. Hell fucking no. Okay, let's go into the next one. See a famous hunter. It was not stated. It's a plaything. It's a toy. A toy is a plaything. So if you look at plaything, you're like, hmm, that sounds positive. Famous hunter, there was nothing in regards to hunter in that sentence. There was nothing in regards to the president in that sentence. Process of elimination. Negative adjective in A. B and C just were not mentioned whatsoever. President and hunter, therefore a plaything, a toy, something that's positive. Play is positive. We can link those together and boom, Bob's your uncle. 
Got it? So here we go. Let's go on to number two, pastimes. This is a little bit tricky. So if we look at pastimes, you don't have to look at all of the answers right off the bat. What you could do is look at the context and put it into your own words. So it says here, Theodore Roosevelt, Teddy, commonly called, 1901 to 1909, horrible human. Now, it says he was an unusually active man, okay? Meaning he was active in doing things with varied pastimes. That's the vocabulary term here. So what is a pastime? Well, after pastimes, there's a comma. And after that comma, there's a little bit of an explanation, even a vocabulary term, which is a dead giveaway. It says one of which was hunting. So hunting, that refers to a pastime. So what could a pastime be? Some sort of activity, right? Correct. Now, because normally, and a distractor is pastimes, meaning the past, right? Not necessarily. We got to look at the context in which it is being used. Hunting activities, leisure activities, whatever it may be. So if we look at this answer or these answers, it says, A, things that occurred in the past. Time, I'm sorry, things that occurred in the past. That is a distractor. It most truly definitely is. So let's keep it going. B, previous jobs is hunting a job. Don't really like it. C, hunting trips, but it said one of which, and he was active. So this is just one of the few pastimes that he did in the past. Or I want to say, I'm sorry, not in the past, but the one of the pastimes that he does. And so going into D, it says leisure activities, which is the answer, because hunting is a leisure activity, a very ugly one, but it is a leisure activity. So that's how we break it down. Previous jobs, hunting's not a job. Things that occurred in the past, that's a distractor. Hunting trips said nothing about a trip. It said one of which was hunting. And he was active, meaning he did many things. And if hunting was one of the pastimes, he probably did fucking skateboarding. Okay? Highly doubtful. Wasn't invented by them. Probably not. So get what I mean? Let's go into the next one. Number three, extricated. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. So let's understand this context. This is a big word. All right. Even for me, I looked at it. I said, extra what? Shut up. So here we go. A bear was captured. What we have to do first, find the word, go to the sentence, okay, where it all begins. Understand the context. A bear was captured, plunked over the head, boom, to knock it out and tied to a tree. However, punk ass Teddy, who really wanted to actually hunt, meaning maybe kill the bear, obviously, I'm not surprised, refused to shoot the bear. Wow, Teddy, you have more empathy for a bear than you do slaves or did slaves. Nonetheless, not going to make this all rich. He refused to shoot the bear and in fact demanded that the bear be extricated from the ropes. So remember, we're looking at the context, right? It says tied to a tree. So it has ropes around it. Now, Teddy wanted to the bear, but then he realized, oh my God, I don't want to shoot the bear. Let him go from the ropes is what extricated kind of means. He demanded that the bear be set free. There is a semicolon after ropes, extricated from the ropes, semicolon. That is, oh, that is. In other words, meaning it's a reformulation, right? It's a way that they're putting it into perspective. What does extricated mean? That is release, be set free. Be set free is the term that you're looking for. And there it is right here. So we go down to number three. A, released is your answer. B, tied up. No, the bear was already tied up. Hunted, no, he was hunting, but didn't want to shoot the bear. And D, shot, hell no. Teddy had empathy for the bear. Shocking, Lee. Got it? So that's how we do it. That's how we break it down. Let's go into the last one. In line 11, cartoon could be best described as a newspaper, a type of teddy bear, a drawing with a message, a newspaper article. 
So what we have to do, we have to go obviously into line number 11 right here. And it says here, or actually, uh, if we look at this, okay, that's, that's, I'm pretty sure that's line 11. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, that's 911. So let me just hurry up and get rid of this one right here. Not 911. Bye bye. All right, line 11, not 911. The incident attracted a lot of attention among journalists. First, a cartoon hyphen. This is something that you would more than likely see on TOEFL too. Now, obviously, the semicolon with that is, and then the meaning of what it means, that it, there, there's potential behind that. But this one right here, when you see a hyphen, what is a cartoon? You might not know what it is. What they do, they put the definition between the hyphen before going on to explain the rest of it. So you see the hyphen here, which I'm going to hurry up and color code this bad boy. Oh, no, I guess not. It's not really helping me. Uh, color code this bad boy a green and the other one green. That is the definition of what a cartoon is. Drawn by Clifford K. Berryman to make fun of this situation. So what is a cartoon? Drawn by Clifford. It's a drawing, right? Is it a newspaper? No. A type of teddy bear? No. A drawing with the message? Correct. That's what it was back then. To make fun of it to make fun of what Teddy had done. So it's a drawing that had a message to make fun. That's why C is your answer. And there it is, people. That's how we do it. Vocabulary and understanding context. Again, if you enjoyed this, make sure you like it, share it with your friends. Make sure you follow me on Spotify if you're not already following me or listening to me on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or tune in or whatever. Uh, and again, if you're interested in the TOEFL ITP reading course, make sure you follow me on IG. It's down below in the link. Arsenio ZSL podcast. Very easy to find. Ask any questions and I'll be seeing you in the next video. I'm your host, as always, over and out.